Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome, hit subscribe, and don't forget to smash that like button. The 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, Season 4, Episode 15, entitled The Never Ending Story, recap with photos I'll set to the side, and my thoughts as I go along. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> So we pick up where the last episode left off where we have Jeffrey and Varya with his friends and his friends are still confused like okay I still don't understand what happened with Mary and then surprisingly we have Mary that popped up looking all crazy and deranged eyes wide open trying to figure out what was going on because remember he was supposed to bring Mary to that outing with the friends at the bar but instead he took Varya but it's a real awkward situation and Jeffrey still plays this I don't know what's kind of going on she just popped up I didn't know she was coming and it's just really annoying because it's like dude what do you want what do you want out of these two women stop toying with Mary and just tell Mary it's over and that your feelings were still with Vi Vira why are you still just pulling her along but anywho so Varya wants to speak with Mary alone and she wants to talk with her to the side and doesn't want anybody to pay attention. And her friend's like, hey, girl, you sure? She's like, no, 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 no. You don't have to come and escort us. Don't worry about me. It's her safety you should be worried about. So as they're sitting there talking, Mary wants to know, okay, why are you here? You just popped up at my man's house. You saw that we were together. But in Vara's eyes, she's saying, hey, I'm fighting for my man. I'm here um, to spend some time with him. And it's quite obvious because he's brought me to this gathering and not you. And of course, that just makes Mary get red. And you could just tell that she is just heated. And she says, look, you don't have to be here. And then anger starts to build. And Varya says, you know, I don't need this. I don't need you speaking to me this way and walks off. But what I find very interesting, Jeffrey and his friends aren't doing anything about the situation. They're just allowing them to go back and forth. This is all Jeffrey's fault. And he finds it somewhat amusing because he's standing there with his arms crossed and just smiling, looking at them go back and forth. It's like, are you finding pleasure that these two women are after you now that you're getting a little attention? Okay, Jeffrey, I, I used to like you at the beginning, but now I... Uh, not so much. So picking up with Lisa and Usman, okay, after that big fight, after she's cursed everybody out and being very disrespectful, she does her normal routine by walking off, knowing that he's going to follow her and try to defuse the situation. And she looks crazy in the rain, sitting there looking in, the, in there in the room, sitting down and her eyes looking crazy. And it's all her fault because she's the one that got angry and walked away. And she's just looking at him like it's all his fault. But, you know, she goes into this toxic behavior and saying, look, I know we just got in this big fight. And I know that if we continue, we can develop our relationship. And she keeps saying we as if he was in a back and forth or speaking loudly or behaving like she was behaving. So you can tell that she's very toxic and she knows ways to just dissuade him and do the Jedi mind trick and making him forget what just happened. And he says that, I love you. I really want us to get married, but you know, you, you keep, you keep having these outbursts with your anger. And she says, you know, I'm sorry. Let's just make the best of it. And let's just have a wonderful wedding tomorrow. And we can work this out and we just need to just calm down. We're stressed. And she keeps using we, and we were, and I'm like, just, ah, it's just so, so annoying. But Usman says, okay, you know, I love you. Let's just move forward. And it's just, it's just so annoying at this point. So then we have David and Lana. And David says, you know, I've only been here a few days and I've only seen Lana two of those days. And I want to see her more, but when I wanted to see her, now she's babysitting her nephew. So it's always this ping pong back and forth. And I don't know how she's feeling. And he tells her online that, hey, I want to end this online relationship. I think it should be more communication back and forth. And I think we should meet up for dinner and I want to speak to you face to face. 
when she shows up for dinner with David, it's another one of those awkward hugs that he always gives her with those creepy moans. Mm, mm, mm. And she just looks so uncomfortable when she's hugging him. And the producers ask, hey, you know, what are you feeling towards David? And surprisingly, she says that I feel that we're connecting and if I spend more time with him, then maybe I could, you know, be a little bit more comfortable and get to know him. So that's shocking to the viewers. So David wants to leave the site and he feels that in order for them to keep talking, that's the only way he's going to continue to talk with her. Because remember, on the site, he has to pay for those services. And surprisingly, she agrees again and confirms face to face that, hey, we're going to get off the site and we're going to get to know each other a little better. So David says he's in love with her and shows her an iPhone. And he says, hey, I got you this new phone. We're not going to communicate online. And she's looking like, ugh, like, man, I got another means of communication with this guy. But then again, it is a new iPhone, you know. It's like, you know, how can you turn down a new iPhone? So she agrees to use that phone. But she still looks so uncomfortable, like, her being there. All of the... All of the hugs just seem forced. Anywho, so Ed wants to meet with his daughter, Tiffany. And remember before his trip to see Rosa, she didn't want him to go because she had her reservations about him getting to know someone online and not knowing who she was. I mean, anybody would have that concern for a loved one, especially going, you know, overseas and meeting someone and you don't know what the intentions are. So before he left, there was this tension between her and her dad and they really didn't talk and she wasn't talking to him for a while so seeing them two together was refreshing and Ed just wanted to see her and let her know that he was appreciative that she agreed to meet with him when they do meet up he tells her that you were right things didn't work out but I have to tell you that as a person I needed to see what was going on myself I needed to check things out myself and to see if it was real and if I hurt your feelings in any way or made you feel that, that you were less than or that I didn't love you, I apologize. And that was great for him to see him apologize to his daughter. But he did not bring up his behavior with Rosa and how he was disrespectful and the way he treated her. But then again, I guess there's a time and a place and he just wanted to have this moment to apologize to his daughter. And that's what he does. So. They hug it out and they cry it out. And the daughter says, you know, I was just feeling really alone and I appreciate you apologizing to me. So I guess things are great with Jeffrey and Varya because the next scene we see they're in bed and they're having pillow talk. So he's kicked married to the curb, clearly. And he's just complete trash, y'all. And Barbara's just saying, look, I want you to stay away from Mary. I don't need another woman to be by my man. And he's like, oh, so I'm your man now. And she explains that, look, I turned your proposal down by saying no, not now, like not no to our relationship. I still want to develop things and to grow. And he just seems just like a kid in a candy store and he's just smiling and beaming. And, you know, Vara says, you know, since you left Russia, you've been on my mind and I feel like I made a mistake. And he says, so you're telling me that if you could rewind time and I asked you to marry me again, then you would say yes. And she said, yeah, that's that's what I would do. I would say yes. And Jeffrey seems surprised and delighted at the same time. So then we go to Stephanie. And, you know, she's doing her voiceover saying, I risked so much seeing Erica with my help, health and doing those things and, and just giving my all to her. And things didn't work out. Um, so it's just this kind of vague you know, like she didn't do anything wrong type of approach. But she wants to meet with her mom so she can finally tell the truth about her trip. She meets with her mom and her brother is there. And she just wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with her mom and says, okay, remember when I went on this trip and I told you that she was just a friend? And the mom was like, yeah, I mean, I could sense something wasn't right when you came back. Like your energy was just totally different. And Stephanie finally fesses up into saying that there was some romance that she was working on. And for a while, she's had those feelings of being bisexual and that she wanted to have something good with Erica, but it just didn't work out. 
And the mother isn't having that as she's talking. She's shaking her head the entire time. And Stephanie says, you know, well, why are you shaking your head while I'm speaking? And she says, no, no, you know, look, I know you've had difficult relationships in the past and things didn't work out. And now I just think you're confused. And it's like this, oh, oh, oh. And Stephanie says, no, I'm not confused. I mean, this is really how I feel. I really wanted to have something develop with Erica. Now, as the viewer, for a long time, I'm thinking, well, Erica, girl, are you bisexual? Because the way that you're behaving with Erica seems kind of odd. It kind of just seemed like she didn't want to be there. And that was just a kick it friend. Um, but, you know, I, who am I to say how somebody feels and how they view people? But it's just the body language just says a lot. But the mother says, you know, even though I don't agree with what you're saying and what's going on with your life, you are my daughter and I love you and I'll always support you. So, you know, just get that in your head that I love you. I just don't agree with what you're telling me. Oh, David, he finds a moment to where he can stick his chest out and just say, I told you so. And he opens up an email from the private investigator that he fired. You know, the investigator that told him, hey, look, from the information that I'm that I've researched, this person has several dating sites that they're going on. And it's very highly likely that this person is a scammer. So now since David has met Lana and he's just feeling off some type of way like Diddy on top of Empire State Building, he brings up that email, opens it up and says, you know, hey, remember when you told me this person wasn't real? And he attaches a photo of him and Lana and he says, you know, we say hi and she would like to say hi too. And he's like, not. And I'm just sitting there watching the episode like, David, he didn't say that this person didn't exist. He said the person exists. He said the research shows us she's a scammer. So what are you... <laughs> What are you getting all amped up about, man? I wouldn't celebrate just yet. But, I mean, I guess it's something that he thought uh, would make him feel a little better. I guess. So, later on, he calls her on that new phone, you know, that he, that he gave her. But, surprisingly, he doesn't, he doesn't get an answer. Jeffrey, you know, explains to his sons what's been going on, that he's not with Mary. He thought that he liked Mary, but since Barry has been here, he want, wants to give it another chance. And his sons were saying that they were confused because one moment you were with Mary and now this woman pops up at your house and now you're hanging with her. And they said, you know, it was kind of back and forth and flaky, but, you know, we just want to see you happy because you're our father. But just make sure that you're safe in what you're doing because it's kind of like this, I don't know what I want, I don't know what I'm doing type of vibe. And Vaya says, you know, I said no to his proposal, but, you know, I, he really does mean a lot to me. And, you know, I see us being together in the future. So when they get dinner later on, Jeffrey says to Vaya, you know, I'm glad that you're taking this seriously and you wanted to see me. But now, you know, I don't even know if I can jump into something as a proposal because I and I'm just like dude you know you want to be with her just 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 stop it just cut the crap so anywho we go to Yolanda and you know her daughter she's had enough she took it up on herself to hire a private investigator and her and her mom sit down to talk with that investigator and that investigator asked him a series of questions about what have you got what's going on and Yolanda gives the evidence and the daughter gives the evidence and as they're speaking the investigator has this look like okay duh you know clearly this is somebody that's scamming you but the investigator says hey from what you're telling me so far about the emails, about them asking you for stuff, at one point you did give your address away, they asked you for photos, all of this stuff going on, the number source, it's highly likely this is, that this is a catfish slash scammer, but I'm going to do my research and I'll get back with you with all of the information that I have. So we're going to wait and that's pending to see what he finds out and hopefully this will give Yolanda the proof that she needs like I'm trying to figure out what's more what, what much more does she need I don't know but hopefully whatever he finds will hopefully bring her some closure so they can move on so it is the morning of the wedding and baby girl visa not Lisa visa V as in victory ISA visa can't even let her man wake up all the way you know without being in his face demanding him wake up wake up wake up 
all over him, bossing him around. It's like, can he open his eyes? And as she's all in his face, he's just kind of bagging back like, whoa, like, she's man, you know, give me, give me a minute. But anywho, she's clearly excited and ready to get this wedding done. And he gets up and he's like, okay, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. I'm going to get dressed. And she's like, it's our wedding day. Get up, hurry up. It's like, she can't even stop bossing him around even on the wedding day. But it's just, uh, it's just very, very, just embarrassing for me to watch. So they're getting ready and Usman is just very excited. And he's so excited that when he gets dressed, he's very happy. And he's like, come look at me, come look at your king. And he has on his attire. And he seems like he's just really, really in love. And they hug and they head on to the wedding um, location. Now, since... The wedding was really rushed. They can't have the traditional wedding. They have to go to the wedding um, registry um, to have their ceremony. So when they go, as she gets out the car, I don't know if this is mean, y'all, but she has on these sandals that are dirty and run over. Now, I know some of you can say, maybe that's all she can afford. Maybe that's all she had. No, 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 no. This lady has been dressed, had Michael Kors bag, all this other stuff. But girl, you can't. You can't put on some just some slide-ons for your wedding day. Okay, I digress. But anywho, as they walk in, surprisingly, Lisa says, you know, I didn't expect all these people to be here. But it's evident that even though his family members don't really <clears throat> agree with the wedding or his friends are not 100% big fans of Lisa, they did show up and support. Um, And you could tell that. Usman's mom and oldest brother are really not feeling the wedding, but they're doing any and anything that they can to seem cordial and be there. So they have the wedding and the whole time they're having the ceremony, I'm looking at the screen like, girl, Lisa, are you going to smile? Smile, girl, it's your wedding day. Like, come on. But they eventually tie the knot and they kiss and she eventually smiles. So what's interesting is that for the reception later, uh, it just so happened that Usman's mom and oldest brother, all of a sudden, they don't feel well and they're not able to make it. But the rest of the crew and the family, they go to the reception and they dance and have a good time. But in their culture and the way that their religion goes, only the men can dance and celebrate. The women have to sit down and watch. But it is a very um family friendly wedding everybody's dancing and being very supportive and for the first time lisa has a smile on her face and it's just like wow somebody take a picture man like this how long has she gone without cursing him out or talking him crazy i thought it was just absolutely insane and production they do get a chance to speak with usman's mother before the reception earlier that day and she says something that's really kind of like, mm. she does say that, hey, they're married, as long as they're happy, that's good. But, you know, when in our in our culture, you know, when the women woman gets married, she has two to three kids in the first couple of years. And she kind of throws that out there like, okay, clearly, Miss Lisa, baby love, probably not going to give her the grandkids that she wants. But anywho... We go, oh my goodness, Devaya and Jeffrey, they are getting on my nerves. I'm tired of seeing them. These two people are so indecisive. But anywho, they spend some time and he takes her to this area where you write down your wishes on this piece of paper. You tie it to this bell. And when you ring the bell, the wish is supposed to go and magically, you know, manifest itself and come true. So as he's telling her about this area, they do it. And when he puts his wish on there and he rings the bell, he's saying that, I hope my wish comes true. And then she goes to ring the bell and she's like, oh, you know, I made my wish. And when she turns around, Jeffrey is on one knee with the same ring asking her to marry him. And she's excited and he um, you know, says, will you marry me? And she accepts the proposal and they're both very happy. And they're like, oh, I just wrote down that wish. And he's like, oh yeah, I just wrote down that wish. And I'm like, okay, good. Y'all together. Now y'all can sit down somewhere. Okay. Just, just make a decision. But what's interesting to me is I wonder how Vaya's family is going to feel about it. Because remember, they were just so against his criminal past. And it's just amazing to me how she got over his criminal, criminal past so quickly. But you know, who am I to? say anything we see Darcy and Stacy 
They are spending some time with one another. And Darcy says, you know, I even had a few of Tom's people reach out to me on his behalf saying that, hey, we should work things out. But gladly, Darcy says, no, I'm, I'm done with him. I'm not going backwards. I don't want to be with him anymore. He can send as many people as he wants with undisclosed numbers to my cell phone, talking about how great he is and how he's thinking about you. I'm done. There's nothing he can say. Like, you know, move on. And I find that interesting because I'm thinking, Tom, did your boo thing in Canada not work out? Or are you just trying to have your cake and eat it too? What's really going on? Like, and how did they get her number? So it's obvious that Tom reached out to some people and said, hey, maybe you can call her. But I hope that's not the case because Tom... Things are not looking too great uh, on your end. But Darcy does explain that Stacy and the possibility of her getting married soon is hurtful because she's still lonely and her sister is getting married. But then she says, you know, that's my sister and I shouldn't feel that way. I should be happy for her. And I'm glad that she said that. So Lisa, it's a sad day for her. She's going back to the States, you guys. And she's so sad because she's sad about leaving soja boy he's in love with her and she's just saying he's my world and she's brought to tears but she also says i'm concerned if he'll stay faithful because you know it's going to take a while to get the visa and that could be six to seven months from now so she's worried about the wrong thing it's like girl you just got married you're newlyweds like don't think about stuff like that just enjoy your man and try to get as many hugs and kisses as you can before you leave like sheesh but Usman does seem very relieved <laughs> when he takes her to the airport and drops her off it's like a weight has been lifted over his shoulders like man I could finally get some peace I wish them all the best but it's just like, wow, you know, memories, you know, what he's going to miss her cursing him out, screaming, being disrespectful, disrespectful to his family. Ooh, memories. Yeah. OK, so Vira and Jeffrey, you know, they're going to the airport saying their goodbyes. And the next step for them is to get a K-1 visa for her to come back to the States. But he feels that everything will be OK. He sees them being together for a very long time and growing old together so david is sad that he's leaving and he's giving those awkward hugs to her mm, mm, at the airport that are just so creepy and her body language just says it all she's just hugging him like can he please get off of me and just go back to america and leave me alone and let me just keep being online and running my scam and making my money because you know he kind of messing my my flow up here being here you know but he leaves, and as he's getting ready to leave, he turns back around. He's just like, I can't leave. I miss you too much. And he's talking to her like she understands every single word. But anywho, and he gets down on one knee, and he says, will you marry me? And she's su surprised, and she kind of looks like ill at first. But then she puts a smile on her face and says yes, and puts the ring on, and they're hugging, and she's giving him kisses. And she seems really happy. And David is saying, everybody doubted me that this wasn't real love, but I have my fiance. She's going to be with me forever. And I'm excited. And it's those continuous hugs where she looks like, please, somebody save me right now. Help me. Um, but that's the end of the episode. I'm just really, like I've said in all of my other recaps, is that I hope that a few of these individuals aren't actors and that they aren't adding in production storylines. I really, really hope not because as the episodes go along in 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days, stories seem kind of off and kind of like a, mm, what about the timing with that? And the example that I used was um, Varya showing up at Jeffrey's house and Mary just so happened to be there. It's like, yeah, I mean, could have happened, yes, but there's just a lot of hap happening that I'm just kind of concerned with. But, you know, we got the reunion coming up and I cannot wait to talk about that and to see what everybody has to say let me know what you thought about the episode once again subscribe and smash that like button smash it let me know what you think i love you guys so much i hope you all are staying safe check out those playlists and binge watch as much as you want there are so many shows there's so many movies and so many health and wellness um movies uh excuse me health and wellness videos there's a podcast show there's so much 
And you guys, I love you. See you next time. Bye.